But the intro, I could definitely do like this. PlayStation 2. Just got a shower. Thought maybe if I looked clean, I would, uh, it would look like I smell better for the audience, for the camera. So you're welcome. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna work our way up to the rarest. So, which is right here. These are the ones you've probably come to see. Number one and number two. I'll get to those. Those will be at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. Okay, PlayStation 2. You're jiggling your chain again. Come here. This is the top 15 PlayStation 2 games that I own. Camera's off a little bit. How about that, Kiwi? What do you think of that? Pretty good. Mm, yeah, I don't think so. PlayStation 2. Okay, so let's get into the list. We will start with Silent Hill 3. It is now worth about $150. The Silent Hill series is pretty notorious at this point, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about this one. Other than you play as Heather Mason, and a cult is trying to force you to birth a new god. Later in this list, there is another Silent Hill game that I will cover more, because it's not as well known. Up next is Shadow Hearts. I got my copy for $10 from a flea market, and now it's worth about $190. The Shadow Hearts games consist of three games in the series. It's a turn-based RPG with Lovecraftian horror elements combined with real-world history presented as alternative history. This is Jeff Jam Fight for New York. It's a fighting game that plays with a mix of street fighting and wrestling, where you fight each other as famous rappers. Not sure if we just suck, but me and my friend tried to play this one two versus two and we were awful. I'd like to imagine that it was the game's fault that we played so badly, so that's what I'm going to do. This is Steambot Chronicles, the first game published by Atlas on this list. It is now worth $240. I like this description of the game I found. It says the game is like Grand Theft Auto if you removed every shred of psychopathy. Open world, lots of mini-games, lots of side quests, in this bright, cheery, happy game. This is Futurama. Everyone is familiar with the show, and it's worth $240 right now. It is a 3D platformer, and apparently the game can be taken as an extra or lost episode for the series, since the original creator, director, and cast voice actors were all part of the game. This is Echo Night Beyond. It sells for about $250 right now. In this game, you are stranded on a space station in outer space filled with ghosts. It's first person and kind of puzzle-like, where you have to find out what a particular ghost wants or how you need to interact with them in order to free them from their unfinished task so they will get out of your way, basically. Okay, so I just quickly wanted to go over um, a tip for collectors, what to look for for collecting. Um, there's three things that I find always seem to go up. In value in the long run is you can look for horror um, weird you can usually be sure a weird game is going to keep going up a good example would be deadly premonition or ribbit king and ribbit king you use a frog as a golf ball so and shoot 'em ups shoot 'em ups I think they stay valuable because they can be played in any language doesn't really matter those are the three things that I always find just keep going up in value after time. Okay, that's all I wanted to say about that, so back to the list now. Up next is Samurai Western, the second game published by Atlas on this list. It's a game where you play as a samurai in a western. It's worth $250 right now. This game is a fast-paced hack and slash. You can actually surprisingly play two-player, where player one has a sword and player two is a gunman. This is Xenosaga 3. It's worth around $270 right now. I got this for $12 from a yard sale. Okay, so I'm just going to be honest here. I have not played this one. I don't play turn-based RPGs very much unless they are horror-themed. Or Chrono Trigger. 
or Mario RPG, or Earthbound, that is all. This is Tulip. It's around $300 right now. I paid $40 for it from the Exchange, if you're familiar with that chain of stores. This game is a weird one, and I like it. Your objective is not to kill or defeat enemies in this game. Your goal is just to try and kiss everyone in town. That includes men, women, a koala bear, an eggplant, the robot king, and a telephone pole. Strange is fun. This is Silent Hill Shattered Memories. It's worth around $300 right now. This is one of the first games that tried the implementation of learning the player's psychology. By asking you questions about what scares you to try and inject different scares into the game. Just like the game Until Dawn did later. This is Obscure. It's worth around $400 right now. It's one of the very few two-player horror games. If you want to play this game with a friend and that's a little too expensive for you, it does have a sequel. The sequel is Obscure the Aftermath. It's also pretty fun and it's $45 right now. The game is set in a high school with lots of spooky monsters. It's fun. Up next is Blood Will Tell and it is worth $400. This game is based on a manga and it has a pretty interesting gimmick. You start the game by only being able to see in black and white until you get back your second eye. The goal of the game is to try and recover other body parts. So you start with swords for hands, which is pretty impractical, but pretty awesome. This is Haunting Ground. It's worth about $550. This game kind of has the same feel as the Clock Tower series, where you really don't have a weapon to defend yourself. You have to do a lot of hiding and puzzle solving. But you do get a dog to help you by holding enemies in place so you can run. And this is Rule of Rose, the third and final game that was published by Atlas on this list. It is worth $750 right now. This game is another odd one, where these little girls basically in a cult control an orphanage. They humiliate the other children and adults and just basically treat them like shit. And this is Kuon. It's worth $850 right now. It's a survival horror game set in feudal Japan. You play as three different characters at different points during the game. You are attacked by monsters and ghosts. You can defend yourself with a standard weapon for each character and spell cards. And the gameplay mostly revolves around puzzle solving. Okay, so that was the video. Thanks for watching. If uh, you have some games, some rare games you want to talk about, PlayStation 2 or whatever you want to talk about in the comments, that would be cool. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thanks. See ya. PlayStation 2.